This is the story of how the Washington Redskins surprised just about everyone and became champions of the National Football League. Hail to the Redskins! Hail victory! Praise on the warpath! Fight for all ye see! They weren't supposed to win it all. The experts hadn't given them much of a chance. They were given no chance at all after losing all four preseason games. But when the real season began, the Redskins were ready. This is Frank Herzog. You'll be hearing me along with Sonny Jurgensen and Sam Huff as we describe the Washington Redskins super season on WMAL Radio. Like a Broadway tryout, the Redskins opened on the road in Philadelphia. And it was a heart pounder, one that set the stage for the rest of the season. The Eagles jumped to a 10-0 lead in the first quarter, but then came Washington's first touchdown of the season. Monk split to the near side. Charlie Brown to the far. Theismann under center with two wings. In motion to the far side goes Williams. Theismann, quick lob for Monk up in the air, makes the catch, touchdown, Washington Redskins. There was another touchdown pass to Charlie Brown, but the Eagles appeared to have it tucked away with a 27-14 advantage in the fourth quarter. Then the spark. Monk to the near side, Brown to the far. Here goes Theismann to pass, loading it up, going for Charlie Brown. He's got him out there, he's got the ball. 25-20, bye-bye, touchdown, number two for Charlie Brown. The play covered 78 yards, Theismann's second longest touchdown pass ever. With three minutes left, a Mark Mosley field goal put the skins ahead 31-27. But the Eagles moved ahead 34-31 with a minute to go. Washington then drove 32 yards to set up a Mosley try from 48 yards out. All right, here we go. Six seconds left on the clock. The Redskins trail by three. Mosley on the field to attempt a 48-yard field goal. He can tie the game and send it to overtime. Snap is good. Hole is good. Kick is up. It's long enough. It's good. We're going to have overtime. The Redskins won the toss. As they moved down the field, Monk picked up 27 yards on a pass from Theismann, and the ball was on the Eagle 42. Three plays later. Ball at the 36 of the Eagles. Monk in motion to the far side. Theismann off the snap. Rolls out to his left. Corner blitz is on. It's Monk at the 20. Down inside the 20 to the 15 to the 10. Still on his feet and knocked down at the nine yard line. That was enough. On first down, in came Mosley. All right, it'll be a 16, 26 yard attempt. Snap, hold is good. Kick is up long enough, it's good. Mark Mosley's toe has sent it to overtime and Mark Mosley's toe has won it in overtime. And in the dressing room later, Mark Mosley was giving a hint of things to come. I guess even through preseason this year, I've always felt like this was going to be my year. I don't know why. I've just had this inclination that, that this was a year that I was going to really have my best year yet, and I'm looking forward to it. I think it started off on the right track. The Redskins went to Tampa Bay having won four straight and nine of 12 over the past two seasons. The game was played in a torrential downpour during most of the first half. Sam summed up the game conditions this way. This is a Riggins type day when it's rainy. You're not playing on artificial surface, you're playing on natural turf. The big fullback, the 235 pounder, he, he is hard to stop. He's hard to stop even on a good day, but in the rain, it's almost impossible to stop that big fullback. We, we have a monitor up here. We're getting some replays on occasionally, and it is obvious that the field conditions are very wet now. There's a lot of water. It's not draining well. Joe Theismann also had a history of being a good mutter, but Buccaneer quarterback Doug Williams was having his problems. Williams again fumbles the snap. Loose ball this time. Who's got it? Redskins have got it at the 27-yard line of the Buccaneers. Who got it? Harry Brooks. Harry Brooks, number 69. Ball never got up again. They're just having trouble with the snap. The skin scored first, moving 60 yards and getting the touchdown on an eight-yard pass from Theismann to Charlie Brown. Williams then mishandled the snap again, and Washington got the ball back on Tampa Bay's 28. Mosley kicked a 35-yard field goal to make it 9-0 skins at the end of the first quarter, and the Redskins kept going to Riggins. We've got to use him in weather like this. Riggins now 14 carries, 41 yards. The decent. I'd give it to him again right here. Let him go. Um, um. <laughs> he blows for the road, man. Williams kept things exciting in the second half, tossing a 62-yard scoring pass to Kevin House. Then there was another fumbled snap that led to a 21-yard Mosley field goal. Washington led 
to six. There was a key play on the Bucks' next possession. They were forced to punt from their own 23. Here goes Swider, blocked! The kick is blocked, picked up by the Redskins into the end zone. Will they recover? There's a scramble. I think it's a touchdown. We'll see. They're going to unpack them. Touchdown! The block was made by Redskins' Curtis Jordan. That made it 18-6 to six and a half time. Tampa Bay scored in the second half to pull within five, but Mosley made good on a 19-yard field goal, and the game ended Washington 21, Tampa Bay 13. Riggins tied a 45-year-old team record with 34 carries. Afterward, Coach Joe Gibbs told us... We have a little Rigo drill at practice. A lot of people don't know about it, but the last five plays of our practice on Thursday, we give the ball to John five times in a row, you know, and we call it the Rigo drill. The guys used to carry him off the field, but they said he weighs so much now they, they hurt their backs trying to carry him off. So the season began with two victories, and it almost ended there. Two days later, the National Football League Players Association went on strike. There would be no football for eight weeks. But during the strike, the Redskins stuck together. Later games were to show that the teams without internal strike controversy performed better on the field. When the strike finally ended, the Redskins were on the road again against the Giants at the Meadowlands, and they started off as if there never had been a strike. Theismann was sharp. A pass to Virgil C. for 34 yards set up a short touchdown toss to Otis Wansley. Then, in the second quarter... Back comes the snap with Theismann. Quick out of the far side to Charlie Brown. Beats his man, spins away from him. 15, 10, 5, going for the end zone. Does not make it. Touchdown, he does. The official took a look and said he made it. Charlie Brown. The play covered 39 yards. The Giants, meantime, were having their problems. A Scott Bruner pass bounced into Dexter Manley's hands, setting up a third touchdown. First and goal, three-yard line. Redskins lead 14 to nothing with 11.20 to go in the first half. Hand off Riggins, sweeping left side. Then goes the diesel for a touchdown. Washington Redskins. And now they have a chance to build a three-touchdown lead over the New York Giants when the boos get even louder. New York finally got a Danello field goal to make it 21-3 at halftime. And the game got closer than it should have been because of this play in the third quarter. Hayes is punting from one hash mark, and Bright is on the other one. Blocked! In the middle. Blocked. Picked up by Hayes. Scramble for the loose ball. Who's got it? The Redskins recover at their own 25, but there's your play. Frank Marion came right up the gut of that Redskins special team and blocked the punt. There could be a big turnaround right there. Bruner threw a 26-yard touchdown pass to Johnny Perkins, and it was 21-10. Later, Mosley kicked a 37-yard field goal, his seventh in a row for the season. But the Giants pulled within seven with 12 minutes left to play. Enter John Riggins. We know that John Riggins worked so hard against Tampa Bay, and he's going to be such a key here in this football game. We went to Redskins Park and recorded what it sounds like on the sidelines to hear John Riggins running the football. A final Mosley field goal was set up by this play in the fourth quarter. Third down and seven. Charlie Brown to the far, uh, to, to the near side. Virgil C to the far. Monk in motion near side. Theismann loads it up, going deep. He's got Virgil C. He's got it at the 25, run out of bounds at the 20. Virgil C. on a go pattern down the far sideline, makes an incredible catch. Right in stride, and credit Joe Theismann with a beautiful throw. For the day, Theismann was 16 of 24. He had not thrown an interception in 83 passes. And the Redskins seemed to be finding whatever it took to win. When the offense finally sputtered the following week in the home opener against Philadelphia, the defense took over. Again, there was rain. In the first quarter, the only score was Mosley's 45-yard field goal, his ninth straight. Then, in the second period, with the skins on the Eagle 35... Back goes Theismann to pass, rolling out here to the near side. Looked like he was setting up screen, now he's going deep. Charlie Brown wide open, 25, 15, 10, touchdown, Washington Redskins! The offense had its problems. Beisman was intercepted twice, ending a streak of 96 passes without an interception. But the defense was something else. With the Eagles threatening near the end of the half. Again, it's a shotgun formation for Jaworski. Gets a good snap, good protection, loading it up, going deep. Got a man out there, picked off at the two-yard line. Vernon, no. Jarris White has got it. Jarris White has got it on a pass intended deep to the corner of the end zone to Ron Smith. That was White's second interception of the half. In the third quarter, the Eagles closed within a point on a Jaworski to Carmichael pass. But on the following kickoff... Here comes Franklin's kick. 
High, beautiful kick. Nelms, though, will take it short at the 10-yard line. Out to the 15, coming near side 20, 25, 30. Still on his feet to the 40. Breaks it loose to the 50, to the 40, to the 35. Pull down from behind at the 32-yard line. Sonny Jurgensen hit it right on the head. Listen to this crowd. as the Redskins needed it. They got a big play and it came from Mike Nelms. That set up a 45-yard Mosley field goal, giving him 10 for 10 on the season. And the defense still had some big ones left. Jaworski back, straight drop, pressure's on, steps into the pocket, lobs an end over end, pass to the end zone, and he's picked off. Mark Murphy right at the goal line. And with less than two minutes to play, Jaworski had the Eagles on the Washington 29. Shotgun formation for Jaworski. Gets the snap, back. Lobs it up in the air, picked off by Murphy at the 10, to the 15, to the 20, out to the 23-yard line. Tony Peters, I take it back, it's Tony Peters with the interception. And the Redskins defense came up with two big plays. They're standing in RFK. Final score, Washington 13, Philadelphia 9. The Redskins were 4-0. The Dallas Cowboys came to RFK Stadium with a game plan that made Joe Theismann their number one target. They sent extra pass rushers at him all day long to keep him off balance. Dallas scored first and then went back to work on Theismann. 31 seconds to go. The Redskins trail 7-0. Blitz showing. Theismann straight drop. He's going to get hit on the blitz by Thurman. And sacked. The Redskins were containing Tony Dorsett. But a Rafael Septien field goal made it 10-0 in the third quarter. Dallas then scored again on an 18-yard run by Billy Newsom, and it was 17-0. In the final quarter, Mosley made good on a 38-yard field goal, his 11th straight and the 200th of his career. But there was little hope the Redskins could pull it out. Until... Charlie Brown to the far side. Monk out to the near. Riggins the lone back. First and 10 at the 17. Theismann, quick drop. Pumps once, out to Charlie Brown, far side, gets away from the man, touchdown, Washington Redskins! Suddenly, it was 17-10, and when the defense held Dallas, there was still plenty of time. The Redskins were to get the ball back. That's what everyone thought, everyone except Danny White. White back at his own five. Redskins jockeying along that line of scrimmage. Remember, White can pass from this, too. Not from there. 8.02 to go. High snap. He's got it. He's going to run with it. White's running with it. Nobody sees him. He's out to the 25, the 35, the 40. Slides to the 43 where he gets decked by three special teamers. But there was a critical mistake. The special teamers so keyed up about the idea of a return, they turned their back on Danny White, and he ran with the ball. There's your big play. The air was out of the balloon. Dallas scored again to close it out at 24-10. The Skins were losers for the first time. It was the sixth straight loss to the Cowboys. They had no way of knowing it then, but there would come a day of reckoning. From then on, there were to be no might have beens. Coach Gibbs was to say, somehow we just find a way to win. Some days it was the offense, some days the defense, some days it was Mark Mosley or Mike Nelms and the special teams. And on some days it was, let's face it, luck. Consider game number six at St. Louis with Jeff Hayes punting to the Cardinals in the opening minutes. Hayes says he's ready. Jeff Bostick to snap. Gets a good snap. Gets a nice high kick away. Stump Mitchell at the 20. Starts his return to the near side. 25. Got running room. Somebody fell down. 30. 40. He's at the 50. He's at the 45. The 40. The 30. He's on his way. He's to the 15. The 10. It's a touchdown, St. Louis, but we've got a flag back up field at the 30. He blocked that time by cornerback Roger Worley, the backup. An 80-yard punt return for Stump Mitchell, but I think they're going to bring it back. Indeed they did, nullifying what might have been the margin of victory. And the very next time the St. Louis offense touched the ball, it was almost curtains again. Wayne Morris and O.J. Anderson, and it's Anderson who gets the pitch off the right side, breaks it out into the middle field. He's at the 30, he's at the 35, the 40. He's got a blocker ahead of him. Vernon Dean's the only one who can stop him at the 25. He knocks him out of bounds. 
My goodness, a 60-yard run by O.J. Anderson, and Vernon Dean knocked him out of bounds to save a sure touchdown. And consider this piece of fortune, also in the first quarter. The ball at the 20, the kick will come from the 27-yard line. It's a 37-yard attempt. He's four for four at that range. Between the 30 and 39. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It's long enough. No good, the string ends. But wait a minute, St. Louis was offsides. Let's move the ball five yards closer and do it again. Good hold again, good snap, kick is up. It's long enough, it's good, it's good. The string is alive at 15 consecutive field goals. Mosley made another in the second quarter, another in the third and in the final quarter. Make that a 14 yard line, a 24 yard attempt. Dysman to hold, good snap, good hold. Kick is up, long enough, good. Nothing to it. Mosley has made it the 18 straight. St. Louis, behind 12-0, finally replaced quarterback Neil Lomax with a veteran Jim Hart. He promptly fired a touchdown pass and was still throwing when the game ended. Second down and 10, three receivers near side. Schumann to the far. Looks like the alley-oop is coming. Murphy's back on the There's end zone the line. There's the snap. It throws it high in the air. It's the alley-oop up in the air. There's a leap for it. Falls incomplete. Redskins will win a football game. There's only one way to talk about Game 7 against the Giants. You have to move quickly to one of the most dramatic situations in Redskin history. Washington is trailing 14 to 12. There are only seconds left in the game. Huge snowflakes are swirling across RFK Stadium. Theismann to hold from the 32, a 42-yard attempt, nine seconds to go. High snap, Theismann's got the ball. Plenty long enough. It's good! Mark Mosley has broken the National Football League record. And the stadium shakes. Swarmed by his teammates at the 35-yard line. Charlie Brown doing backflips. Mark Mosley has booted a 42-yard field goal to give the Redskins a 15-14 lead with four seconds left to go. The kick not only won the game, it was Mosley's third of the day, his 21st straight to break the NFL record. And it put the Redskins into the playoffs. Just a few months before, Mosley had almost lost his job to rookie Dan Miller in training camp. The Redskins had stayed in the game despite five first-half turnovers, and their only touchdown came on a broken play in the third quarter. 8.25 left to go in the third quarter. Theismann on first down, hands to Washington. Option pass. He wants to throw it. Can't. Has to tuck it in and run it down to the 20, to the 15. He got a block from Theismann. He's to the 5. He's to the end zone. Touchdown! And they grab Joe Theismann. They're jumping up and down because Theismann threw the key block on Joe Washington's broken play touchdown run. And after Mosley's heroics, the Redskins were in the playoffs. Their next goal, the home field advantage for at least the first round game. <laughs> Going into the New Orleans contest, fate seemed to be beckoning to the Redskins again. Saints quarterback Ken Stabler was out with injuries, replaced by the inexperienced Guido Merkins. And leading rusher George Rogers was also a casualty. The Redskins wasted no time. On their first possession, they moved to their own 43 and... Back is Theismann, blitzes on, going deep, got a man! It's Charlie Brown, it's gone! Touchdown, Washington Redskins! Charlie Brown on cue, burns them. The play was good for 57 yards, but early in the second quarter, New Orleans tied it 7-7. The Redskins offense was sputtering again until Theismann and Brown connected on what became a controversial play. Again, Riggins in the backfield. There's the snap. Theismann straight drop, looking near side for Charlie Brown. Up in the air, got the football. He's gone. 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Flag on the play at the near side 35-yard line. It took the officials five minutes before they let the play stand. Brown had been pushed out of bounds, but came back in legally to make the catch of the tip ball. The question, did he have both feet in bounds when he controlled the ball? The replays went on endlessly, sparking new controversy, but it was a 58-yard touchdown, Brown's eighth scoring catch of the season. The only other significant happenings were Mosley's 22nd and 23rd straight field goals to add to his record. 
Dallas had lost its game to Philadelphia, and the Skins were in position for home field advantage for all of the playoffs with just one more win. Coach Gibbs in the locker room. It was a long haul, and uh, getting where we are right now feels good. Now we want the home field, and the thing I'm proud about for our fans and for everybody is that we get to play a home game for, for Washington. That's what our players wanted for our fans and for us to have a playoff game in Washington. Washington wound up the regular season at home against St. Louis and showed a good blend of offense and defense, shutting out the Cardinals 28-0. There were two discordant notes. One came in the opening minutes. Play action fake. Theismann pumps once, going right down the middle. Got Mock diving fingertip drop at the 30-yard line. Oh, it was just inches away from being a big one. He lays it up. Joe likes to throw that ball on the line. He threw the perfect pass, if you recall. Against New Orleans, he threw it down the middle on that same type of play. He had Monk wide open. If he lays the ball up and lets Monk run to the ball instead of throwing it on the line, your margin of error is just, see, Monk's limping off the field right now. He got a little, maybe knocked the wind out of himself. No such luck. Monk had actually fractured his toe. He was out of the playoffs. The other disappointment was the end of Mark Mosley's streak. Sonny had some misgivings about it as the team lined up for a 40-yarder in the first half. I don't like this kick. I don't like this kick because it doesn't mean anything for Mosley. Good snap. The hold is good. The kick is up. It's long enough. No good. That's why I didn't like it. The streak is over at 23. The streak ends at 23 for Mark Mosley. His kick goes wide to the right. And listen, he'll still get an ovation. It was the only game where the outcome was never in doubt. And that gave the broadcast crew time for a little fun. Next time they should score when they get the ball. Remember that. All right, write that down. Write that down, Sam. I got, I got it written in a mental note. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sucker's lost forever. <laughs> so the Washington Redskins were the number one seed going into the playoffs. Their 8-1 and one record was the team's best in 40 years. It would play all of its tournament games at RFK. We are the Redskins. Everybody. The mighty, mighty Redskins. Super Bowl. The Detroit Lions came to RFK as one of the two teams in the playoffs with losing records. But on their first possession, they moved quickly to the Skins 21, with Eric Hippel looking sharp. Then... There's the snap, and to Sims, looking left guard. Darts his way through the middle, gets inside the 20, down to about the 17. Again, the Redskins say, we have the football. And again, the officials do not react. They, yes, they do. They do. They got the football. Second time's a charm. A fumble by Billy Sims, deep in Redskins territory, has thwarted what looked like a sure touchdown drive. Rich Mullott recovered the fumble. It was the first of three first quarter mistakes that killed what looked like Detroit touchdown drives. The most spectacular turnover came on the Lions' second possession with the ball on the Redskins 23. Back to pass is Hippo, rushes on, gets it off near side, picked off, picked off by Jarris White. He's gone, he's going 70 yards, 30, 25, 10, touchdown, Washington Redskins. The whole bench clears. The return of 77 yards was the second longest interception return in NFL playoff history. And Detroit wasn't through turning the ball over. On possession number three, the Lions were on their own 25. Back as Hippo blitzes on, nailed, fumble to football. Redskins have it inside the 20 at the 19. Mosley subsequently kicked a field goal to put Washington out in front 10-0. Alvin Garrett, starting for the first time for the injured Art Monk, was sensational. Back is Theismann, quick lob into the corner of the end zone. A stretch, touchdown, Washington Redskins. Alvin Garrett with his second today. At the half, Washington 24, Detroit nothing. Any chance of a Lion comeback went by the boards early in the third quarter. Theismann to pass. Got a man open. Near corner. He's got Garrett. He's got it. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. He beat Bobby Watkins to the near corner. Three touchdown catches for Alvin Garrett. The bench empties again to congratulate him. He had him single covered. And he just could not hold him at all. He was by him from the second step. I can't believe this. Alvin Garrett has not only come up. Oh, look at this. They're swinging their arms. 
Oh, a volleyball high five with about five receivers. The fun bunch was born, and the Redskins led 31 to nothing. Detroit finally scored the first touchdown against the Redskins in nine quarters. The defense was still to come up with a final big play, though. The ball was on the Washington 22. Hippo rolls out to the near side, flies it into the end zone, picked off, yes! Intercepted in the end zone by Jarris White, his second interception of the day. He raises a fist to the fans in the end zone and they dance in delight. Theismann ended the day 14 for 19. He had turned things over to John Riggins. Riggins coming near side, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45 of the Detroit Lions. <laughs> 100 yards for John Riggins. Riggins gained 119 yards on 25 carries. He had played sparingly the past two weeks because of a sore thigh, but as Coach Gibbs explained after the game. This time he came right to me and he says, hey, I, want, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because we activated Wilbur. <laughs> but he came to me and he said, hey, he says, I want the ball. And I says, uh, hey, you're going to get it. You're the only guy left that can get it. And get it, he did, in playoff game number two against the Minnesota Vikings. It looked in the beginning as though the Redskins would have as easy a time as they had had the week before. Riggins took up right where he left off. And to Riggins, up the middle, big hole, 30, 25, 20, inside the 20 to the 15. John Riggins, the diesel, and free safety John Turner must tackle him. The Skins drove 63 yards on that first possession and had the ball on the Minnesota three. There's the snap, Here play action comes. fake. He's got Didier in the end zone, drills it to him, touchdown. We got a flag. Don Warren makes the catch in the end zone. The flag was against Minnesota. It was 7-0. Later, the Skins moved inside the Vikings, too, after a flea flicker from Joe Theismann to Alvin Garrett went for 46 yards. Motion to the far side, back to the near. There's the snap. And to Riggins, held up in the backfield, dives forward. Did he get it? Touchdown, John Riggins! <laughs> yes, sir, here it comes on 395. John Riggins from one and a half yards out has given the Redskins their second touchdown of the afternoon and a 13 to nothing lead. A sputtering Minnesota offense finally came alive in the second quarter behind Tommy Kramer. After a 42 yard pass completion, the Vikings had second and seven on the Redskins 18. Kramer hands off up the middle. Good hole for Ted Brown. Breaks it outside, far side, 10. He's to the five. He's into the corner of the end zone for a touchdown, Minnesota Vikings. But the Skins came right back. A 30-yard pass completion, Theismann to Charlie Brown, and several John Riggins carries put the ball at the Minnesota 18. On the snap, Theismann straight drop, pressure's on, gets it off over the end zone, Alvin Garrett touchdown, Washington Redskins. On the slant, Garrett right over the middle of the end zone on a post. The Redskins have gone up 20 to 7. It ended 21 to 7, though both teams had more scoring opportunities. Minnesota reached the Redskins 39, 28, and 15 yard lines in the second half, but failed to score. Even the usually reliable Sammy White dropped a well-thrown pass in the end zone. Meantime, John Riggins was pounding away for the Redskins. The lone back is Riggins. He gets the call. Left guard again. Good hole. Four to 30. Down to the 30-yard line to the 28. <laughs> He's over 100 now. Pack on nearly 10 yards. Vikings look like they're ready to quit, don't they? <laughs> they look like they're ready to get out of the diesel's way. And the defense, well, the defense was showing how it had only allowed two touchdowns in the last 14 quarters. Tommy Kramer in the <laughs> shotgun on second and 10. He pumps one, trying to get away from the rush, scrambles to the far side, throws it up the field, got his man. Oh, Tony Peters leveled him. Incomplete pass for Terry LeCount. And the Viking bench is irate. That should have been a completion. Yeah, when well, you can hold it like that when Tony Peters drills you. But the big story was John Riggins. He was relentless, operating behind an offensive line now affectionately known as the Hogs. On first down, Riggins gets the carry, coming near side, cuts back against the grain to the 30, to the 35, breaks it loose to the 40. He's to midfield, down to the 45 of the Vikings. Big run, John Riggins. Riggins carried the ball more times than ever in his 11-year pro career and he simply overwhelmed the Vikings. Finally, with a minute left to play, Coach Gibbs let the fans show their appreciation. Listen to the ovation. Oh, look at him. He takes the bow. <laughs> look at him to both sides. I love, love it. it. I love it. Bravo. I love it. He made a bow to both sides of the stadium. <laughs> Quarterback Joe Theismann was no slouch either on this day, completing 17 of 23. 
and the stage was now set for the big Dallas shootout. On the line was the National Football Conference Championship. It could be described only as delirium. Even during the Minnesota game, the chant had reverberated around RFK, we want Dallas, we want Dallas. And Dallas had obliged by beating Green Bay. The Skins were out to gain the Super Bowl by avenging their only loss of the season. At RFK on that January 22nd, the crowd gathered early, probably the noisiest and most enthusiastic home gathering ever. It was as though the crowd felt that it could will a victory for the Redskins. They are on their feet at RFK. Listen for a second. <laughs> what we Dallas. want Dallas. Yeah, they don't have to play against them. Well, Dallas on cue just came out of the locker room and got greeted by the Blues, and already that stadium section over there across the field from us is moving up and down. Dallas took the opening kickoff and drove to the Skins' 10-yard line, with Danny White completing his first four passes. Then... Third down and five. Back is White. Lobs it up into the end zone. Knocked away by Vernon Dean. Stymied there at the 10. Septien kicked a 27-yard field goal. Dallas had taken a 3-0 lead. On the Skins' first possession, Theismann began cranking up, and John Riggins was turned loose with third and one on the Dallas 36. It's Riggins, left side, good hole, 35 to the 30, breaks it outside to the 25, out of bounds at the 20. <laughs> we don't even have to tell you who that is. They are on their feet at RFK. That put the ball in the 19, and the Redskins wasted no time. Seisman back, looking over the middle, threads the needle, Charlie Brown, touchdown, Washington Redskins. It's moving, the stadium's moving. Oh, man. Here goes the fun bunch in the end zone. Rock. Two, up in the air, high five. At the end of the first quarter, it was Redskins 7, Dallas 3. In the second quarter, the Redskins threatened again, but the drive bogged down on the Dallas 10. Mark Mosley's 27-yard field goal attempt was no good. On their next possession, the Redskins were forced to punt from the Washington 44. Good snap. Hayes gets the kickoff. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Hill at the 10-yard line. Hit. Fumble. It goes to the end zone to the one. Scramble in the end zone. What's the call? I don't know. Touchback. Are they going to say Washington ball at the 10-yard line? Washington ball at the 10? Are you kidding me? Oh, it should be a touchdown. Monty Coleman has it. Monty Coleman holds that ball in the end of the fan. Oh, they call it a muff. They call it a muff instead of a fumble. You cannot advance a muff. But the Redskins had the ball on the Dallas 11, and it didn't take long. Did he in motion? Hand off, Riggins, left guard, bolt, touchdown, Washington. <laughs> Here he comes. A right, guy. Again, the stadium shakes. That made it 14-3 Redskins, and that's all the scoring there was in the first half. But there was an important play with only 23 seconds left and Dallas threatening. Again, wide out of the shotgun, first and 10 from the Redskins, 32. Gets the snap, back, blitz is on, cut, fumble the football, it's down at the 40-yard line. White got shaken up by Dexter Manley. Oh, and White is the down. Field. He is down. Well, they came it. with the blitz is right, Sam. They had to go get him. Danny White looks like he's knocked out. Oh, he is out. White was out all right, out of the championship game. His replacement, young Gary Hogaboom, had seen little action. But as the third quarter got underway, he looked like he'd been playing all year long. On the Cowboys' first possession, he engineered a drive that ended this way. High formation. There's the snap. Hogaboom to pass. Flips it over to the near side. He's got Pearson. Touchdown. He's hit at the goal line, but he made it into the end zone. Touchdown, Dallas Cowboys. It was now Washington 14, Cowboys 10. Mike Nelms had set up that Cowboy drive by fumbling the kickoff on the seven-yard line. The Skins had recovered, but had lost important field position to the Cowboys. So it was a determined Mike Nelms when Dallas kicked off the next time. Nelms will take it at the four. 
Far side, 10, 15, out to the 20, busts it to the 30, he's got a block, he's to the 40, midfield, he's out of the 40, it's a foot race, he'll be knocked down at the 21-yard line of the Cowboys, there's your big play! Wilbur Jackson was one of the key blocks on that one. at the Dallas 20. I've never heard a roar like this at RFK. These fans are fanatic. 76-yard kickoff return by Mike Nelms and the Redskins are knocking at the door. That door opened a short time later, sparked by this key pass play from the Dallas 28. Third down, 18 <laughs> yards to go. Big play for the Redskins offense. Gio Quito in motion. The blitz is on again. Theismann rolls to his right. He's got blockers. Flips it downfield. Charlie Brown makes the reception at the six. First and goal, Redskins. And it was diesel time. It's second down and goal from the three. Again, Riggins up the middle. Good hole. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. <laughs> Look out, Keller, here comes the diesel. That touchdown made it Washington 21, Cowboys 10. And the crowd at RFK was going bananas. The cheer starts again. We want Dallas. Boy, these fans are going to rub it into those Cowboy fans today. Hopefully. They have been the 12th man. There's no doubt about that. The stadium has shaken three times today. Our booth has bounced up and down. But young Gary Hogaboom was not intimidated. On Dallas's next possession, he drove the Cowboys to the Skins' 23-yard line and then hit Butch Johnson with a scoring pass. Score, Redskins 21, Dallas 17. But that was the high-water mark for Hogaboom. The Redskins' defense decided that was enough. Hogaboom, the quarterback, back to pass on first down. Far side, picked off. Money, Mel Kaufman's got it at the 42-yard line, and he's pulled out of bounds at the 40 of the Cowboys. Mel Kaufman with the interception. Oh, is that a big play? And it led to a Mosley field goal. Redskins 24, Cowboys 17. 37 seconds later, it was Dallas at their own 20-yard line. On first down, play action fake to Dorsett. Hit the ball well. Set up a screen, batted in the air, picked off by Darrell Grant. Touchdown, Washington Redskins! I don't believe it! Dexter Manley tipped the pass. Darrell Grant got the interception. And now the stadium shakes. Unbelievable. The Cowboys only saw the ball one more time and failed to move it. Now it was Riggins' time again, eating up that clock. Another big day for Riggo. 140 yards on 36 carries, two touchdowns. After a 10-year wait, the Washington Redskins were heading for a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 17 in Pasadena. In the Skins locker room, Sonny Jurgensen caught up with an ecstatic owner, Jack Kent Cook. Congratulations. I oh, love you. you and listen, you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. Are you happy? And this club, listen, this club is going to win the Super Bowl. Between the two of us, we're going to get everything that we've ever wanted, dear Sonny. On a sunny January 30th in the Rose Bowl, the Redskins were still looking for respect. Despite 14 wins in their last 15 games and a seven-game win streak, the Miami Dolphins were posted as favorites in Super Bowl 17. More than 103,000 fans were on hand, second largest in Super Bowl history. And Miami made the odds makers look good at the outset. On their fifth offensive play, the Dolphins had the ball on their own 20. David Woodley was the quarterback. Makes the pass, coming to the near side. He's got Cephalo wide open. Big gainer. He's got a man beat to the 40, to the 30. He could be gone. It's a horse race. It's a Miami touchdown. The Redskins were relying on John Riggins to loosen up Miami's number one rated defense. And just before the first quarter ended, it was Mark Mosley time. Heisman to hold. The Dolphins dig in. Good snap. Good hold. Kick is up and through. Mosley has gotten the first points of the day for the Washington Redskins. Later in the second quarter, a long Miami drive ended with a Von Schaumann field goal and the Dolphins led 10-3. Starting at their own 20, the Redskins went to work quickly. Theismann loads it up. Out of the backfield of Walker. Far side 30. Wide open. Out to the 40. To the 45-yard line. Still on his feet to the 50. Finally pushed out of bounds. And that was the key play in a drive to the Dolphin four. And then... Two receivers to the near side. Brown... 
and Garrett lob into the end zone. Garrett's there. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. He got it. The lob to Art Monk, usually the big receiver. This time it works to Smurf, too. Redskins are going to tie this football game. Don't count them out. Here comes the fun bunch in the end zone. Oh, is that fun? All right. A fun bunch did it. That euphoria was short-lived, and so was the tie. With less than two minutes left in the half, here's what happened. Here's Hayes' kickoff. I end over end, waiting back deep, Fulton Walker. He's got it at the 2, out to the 5, to the 10, comes to the near side, to the 20. He's out to the 25, turns it back. He's gone, 50-yard line, 40-yard line. He's gone. It's a touchdown, a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown for the Miami Dolphins. And as soon as the Redskins tie it, the Dolphins come back on top. At halftime, it was Miami 17, Washington 10. In the third quarter, the two sides exchanged punts, and then the Redskins began moving the football. First and 10, Washington, 47-yard line. Brown in motion to the far side of the formation. There's the snap, and to Riggins. Back it goes, near side, Galvin Garrett. Lot of hole, 50, he's to the 40, he's to the 30. It's a foot race to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and he's pulled out of bounds in the near side. A little inside reverse, the wide receiver, Alvin Garrett, and the smurf almost broken. But Miami held at the three, and the Redskins were forced to go to Mosley again. That made it 17-13. And the defense for both sides began to dominate play. Walker in motion, mix up, Theismann, Passes over the middle, picked off by Dewey. He's got into the 48-yard line of the Redskins. Immediately tackled by Don Warren. He didn't get it high enough. That's right. It was a rollout, a bootleg play by Thiesman. Trying to throw it softly over the middle. The first mistake by the Washington Redskins. But only four plays later, the Redskins returned the favor. Woodley on second and 12. Look backfield behind him. There's the snap. Looking, looking, lobs it up high and soft, batted around, picked off by Murphy at the four-yard line, and he's tackled there immediately. Murphy, and that time Woodley makes the, makes the mistake. And so back-to-back -back interceptions, and the Redskins have the ball back. And then there was the near miss, one that could have put Miami ahead for keeps. The Redskins had the ball at their own 18-yard line. On first down, Theismann to throw. Fakes the pass, scrambles, comes back the other way. Ball batted in the air, grabbed by a dolphin, incomplete. Oh, Lord, oh. was that almost the game breaker? That very, was very close. A touchdown. Bob Brzezinski, I think, batted it. And number 58, Kim Bocamper, the defensive end, came very, very close to an interception for a touchdown. I wish they changed his number. Oh, your life flashes before your eyes when you're the quarterback on that play. Bocamper plays left defensive end wearing a, a linebacker number. He batted it in the air, and Joe Theismann made the job of stripping him of the ball or he'd have had a touchdown. And the third quarter ended with Miami still leading 17 to 13. In the fourth quarter, the Skins went back to John Riggins. With a fourth down and one to go at the Dolphin 43, Coach Gibbs gave the green light, and everybody knew the ball would go to Riggins. He needs one very important yard right here, I'll tell you. Here we go. Theismann brings them out. Two tight ends and a wing to the far side in Didier. I formation, Wansley and Riggins. Motion by Didier. There's the snap, hand to Riggins. Good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 35, the 30, the 20. He's gone. He's gone. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. He said he should go. He went. The big guy did it. Holy cow, what a play. What a guy. And there's the smile on Don Shula's face. Gone. He is grabbed. The bees are dead. 42-yard touchdown run on fourth and a foot. And John Riggins has gone over the 100-yard mark. John Riggins has given the Redskins the lead in Super Bowl 17. Birdie carries 142 yards. The big guy. Oh, my goodness. With the score, Washington 20, Miami 17. Don Strzok took over at quarterback for Miami and got nowhere. The Redskins, on the other hand, moved into the Rigo drill and were at the Miami 6 with two minutes left to play. Here we go. Harmon in the backfield. Motion by Brown. Bison Here's a rollout. Rolling out to his right. He should run it in. He flips it. Touchdown. 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 Washington Redskins. Charlie Brown. It was all over. 
Miami made a final desperate bid, but the Redskins' defense held again. Just before the end, the word came that was no surprise to anyone. John Riggins, the MVP. He wanted it, he got it, and he deserved it. He earned it, that's for sure. Riggins had carried 38 times for 166 yards, both Super Bowl records. He amassed 108 yards in the second half. And finally, the countdown. They're going to the middle of the field. Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins. For the first time Hot since 1942, dog. the Washington Redskins have an NFL championship. The end of a magical season. It had seemed like destiny. But in the dressing room, Coach Joe Gibbs took a less mystical view of it. We got the right people together. And then all I had to do, really, this time, I had to do very little this year from the standpoint of getting them ready. If you, I just tried to be honest and say, hey, here's what's at stake. These guys are motivated, and I think they got champion's heart. You know, there's certain guys that don't have that. Some guys do. For owner Jack Kent Cook, it was a moment like no other. I have never in my life felt as happy as this. Now, this is uh, an unmitigated, incontrovertible, uncompromising feeling of ecstasy. There's nothing that I've ever experienced to touch this. And the only time that it'll, I'll have the equal of this will be next year when we win the Super Bowl for the second time in a row. Quarterback Joe Theismann offered his own tribute. You people have been the absolute most magnificent ones in the world. Today, in this stadium, there were more Washington Redskins fans making more noise than Miami Dolphins fans. And because of you, because of the people out there, we're where we are. And what they are, are world champions.